Okay, so I had a very cool package from Edatech yesterday and it contained a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5, a couple of breakout connections, and this incredible industrial case which is so solid. It actually is it's one of those objects that feels heavier than it looks. Uh, there's also a Compute Module 5 board there as well. Now this is my first Compute Module 5 and if we put it next to a Raspberry Pi 4 you can see how very tiny it is. It's also incredibly slim and if we have a close look at it you can see that this board is the light variant so there's no EMMC there and the EMMC is tiny. Check out how small it must be next to an SD card. And you can also see on that same side of the board that this is the 2 gig variant. And the biggest thing on it is the CPU, so the Raspberry Pi 5 CPU on there. And the most interesting thing on the back are the connectors that connect it to the board. So the case comes with these two antennas and they're actually labelled Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and 4G. We've got these industrial connectors here, we've got some status lights, more industrial connectors and a couple of Ethernet ports, a couple of USBs and a full size HDMI and a little reset button. And this connector, which I'm guessing is some sort of standard industrial connector, I'm going to take it apart and have a look, see what it's like inside. But before I do that, let's have a look at the specs. Uh, this is from AliExpress, so Edatech have told me that it's already on there. So we're looking for the IPC series, here we are. ED IPC 3100, they had loads that they offered me. This was the one that I thought was the most interesting. So there's only one image on there, let's go for specs. So industrial computer based on Pi CM5, up to 16 gig of RAM with 32 gig of storage, micro SD, M.2 NVMe drive, one gigabit ethernet and 100 meg ethernet. Four isolated RS-232-485 with electrostatic and surge protection. Not really my thing, but if you're into the industrial side, it definitely is. I'll try and skip past any of the, just the normal CM5 specs. So wide voltage power input range of 9 volt to 36 volt with reverse polarity protection, over voltage protection and over current protection. Integrated super capacitor, backup power supply optional, real-time clock, Watchdog, EEPROM and crypto authentication. Works between minus 25 and 60 degrees. High quality metal case, compatible with DIN rail installation. I need to look that up because I don't know what that is. Ah, so it must be this sort of thing here, look. And in fact, there's something, you know, like a similar looking thing here. Yeah, so it must be all of this. DIN rail installation is preferred because it provides a standardised space saving and easily accessible way to mount electrical components within a panel, allowing for quick and efficient installation, maintenance and flexibility by enabling interchangeability between various manufacturers' components due to the standardised design and mounting system. You do learn something every day. So it's just listing Raspberry Pi OS as the operating system, but I would expect it to work with quite a few other things but obviously that's going to have the maximum sort of compatibility and support for companies. I mean, they don't want to deviate too much. And there's loads more specs in here. I'll link this in the description. Uh, but I've just noticed that there is no standard power supply. So because I'm used to home products, unless it works on power over Ethernet, hopefully it does. You can see here it connects with various 4G LTE modules through the mini PCIe interface with antenna. So if I just do a control F in the page and type in PoE, yeah, there's no mention of power over ethernet. I thought it would be because the other one that I've got, the Pi 5 one, is power over ethernet. But I guess it still might be uh, because I might not have a board in here yet. So let's take it apart. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's grab that one. These came not on the device when it, when it first arrived. Something feels more loose. Yeah, that's coming off. This is able to move somewhat. I think that is actually keeping something in place. Look at that board. So no battery in the real-time clock. Uh, obviously no compute module. In fact, where does it go? It must be on the underside of that. So this has got an M.2 slot, there's a DSi 
uh, so a display connection here. Load more connectors for powering, GPIO pins, more GPIO pins, more connections for powering. There's a micro USB here. Why didn't I see that then? Is that obscured? Oh, it's under this, the micro USB. Oh, so I can power it, maybe. So if I, well, I can take that off in a minute, um, but that will basically give me another connector. I mean, they're not expecting you to power it by micro USB. Funny that it's got micro USB, uh, although it does say programming for micro USB. I guess that's why they've given me the other board to put an OS on it, but then as it's a light one, I can use the SD card slot anyway, which is that one, because that's the SIM one. So I'm going to take this off to show the other side. I'm going to do that, like that. All right, let's try and remember what screws are what. Oh, I could always power it via the GPIO pins, maybe. With one of my uh, homemade options. Oh, I probably have something else that powers a device via the GPIO pins anyway. Okay, I need to set these out because it's getting too many screws now. So three here. What will happen now is my cats will come in. Oh yeah, it's coming. Oh, there's already one in there. And also there's a board there as well. Oh wow, so I've got two compute module fives. Okay, thanks EDATEC. Yeah, look how thick and solid this all is. It's it's just meant to last, isn't it? A minus 25. Oh, it's an EMMC, 32 gig and four gig. Wow, so I didn't need to take this apart, but I do need to know what this bit is. EC25-EUX. It would pick the German one. No, no, it's gone British, but it is DE.AliExpress. So, where's my translate? My wife does speak German, but she's not here. Okay, let's just grab some of this. Translate into English. This makes backwards compatible with existing Edge, GSM, GPRS networks and ensures that it can also be used in remote areas without 4G or 3G coverage. Nice. I've got to plug a micro USB in there and see if it does something. So Raspberry Pi 5 power supply. What's it, 25 watt, I think. Uh, and then I've got USB-C to micro. So let's just plug that in. Okay, I think the lights are on the other side. Oh, the lights are up here. Yeah, no lights. Okay, so it did say program, so that's, I guess, to be expected. And I have got uh, this, which is, this is an AMD Ryzen computer. I've got a separate video on this. But this comes with this barrel cable, and it's clearly labeled plus and minus. So I'll be able to work out to be able to plug it into the right pins. Uh, and the power supply, that it comes with 12 volt, 5 amp. Okay, I reckon that's gonna be okay. So the connector here clearly lists voltage input and ground, so I'm okay with that. And that connector, I'm gonna be able to use the same as this. It's, it's even the same color. I kept meaning to try something with this board because the fan's just ridiculously noisy. It was very powerful being an AMD Ryzen, but yeah, super noisy. So I think I'm gonna put it back together uh, because everything is in there. And if there's no OS on the Raspberry Pi, then I found before with the Compute Module 4, you can just use an SD card. Uh, so I think I might try that rather than writing the OS to it. Or I take that out, although I don't like disconnecting these. Uh, I did those on a uh, CADAS board and couldn't get them back on. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna reassemble it as it is. Obviously this isn't the sort of thing that you regularly take apart. You put it in place and you leave it in there for 10 years, controlling machinery and cameras and all sorts of things. And the way that the sort of commercial side of Raspberry Pis is going, they, they must be everywhere because they've developed a standard that has really good support. Okay, so I plug that in. 
just need a very thin screw to pull this up to work out how the wire secures in. Ah, okay, I see. So you can tighten up the screws and you can see it's pulling the side in to clamp the cable. Perfect. And I've got these cables to go in. So the yellow one in the voltage input, and the black one in the ground. I used to wire up three pin plugs for customers because it didn't used to be a legal requirement in the UK to come with a plug. So you'd sell a toaster or a kettle and then you would put the plug on for the customer and charge them for the plug. That feels pretty solid. Yeah, that, I can lift it up with it. That's the test. And just double check. Yeah, ground and VIN. So this cable's got like a PC connector on it or a kettle plug. This is a full-on connector, these. I've, not, I've never had one of these before. So that puts in and then we can screw it together. I haven't switched it on yet. So we've got full-size HDMI. Pop a SD card in. I think this card's already got Raspberry Pi OS on it. They did this thing where once it's in, you can't get it out. Uh, but they did supply me with tweezers for the Pi 5 one because that's the same design. The moment of truth. Switch on. Power supplies comes on. Uh, and you can see that I have the lights on as well. Is it going to wake my monitor? It is. That's a relief. SSH is enabled and I can tell that that must be the eMMC drive because the SD card wouldn't have had that enabled. So let's say OK to that. And this is because the Compute Module 4 or 5 boots as standard from the eMMC drive. And I don't think you can change the boot order, but I'll have a look because I haven't looked for ages. So let's do a test on the eMMC drive. So if we go to Diagnostics and Run Test, and let's see how quick it performed. Yeah, that's very quick actually. So show log. And if we call up the web browser, and if I go Lee PSP video. Oh, I haven't connected the Wi-Fi yet. And I thought I would do a Wi-Fi test because I've got proper antennas. So the Wi-Fi is picked up all right in here. It's not a good room for Wi-Fi, but what I generally do is plug in an ethernet cable in here. So let's have a look. Oh, here we go. Because these results will have command queuing enabled. Um, so that's as fast as an SD card gets. So CQ enabled, 64 bit official Raspberry Pi SD card with CQE enabled. So we had 29,487 versus 109,044. Uh, random write speed, 2028 versus 23,405. Uh, and random read speed, 5561 on the SD card, and 19,835. So the eMMC drive is way faster than the SD card slot. And did I have NVMe tests in here? I don't think I did. I think I included them in the video. Um, but if I go back, yeah, well, I've done some tests in this video. So, for instance, there's a PCIe 3 speed here. So on the X1001 board. NVMe much quicker there, look, 697,000 versus 109,000, uh, 94,000 versus 23,000, 59,000 versus 19,000. So, yeah, clear difference between the SD card and then the eMMC and then the NVMe drive. But for the use that these are for, you probably find the eMMC is perfectly fast enough and super reliable, lots of read and writes. Let's have a look at the temperature, uh, and in fact, let's play a bit of a video as well, so we can get the temperature up a little bit. But before I do that, I'll install P sensor, but now I've spelled it wrong. That's better. And let's launch that. Reading the temperatures, all right. And we've got a nice cool 47 and 39 degrees. It's been on for really quite a long time because I edited, had some lunch, all sorts of things. But let's play some video and see how much difference that makes. So it's been playing video for a bit. 51 and 43 are the temperatures we've got. 
pretty reasonable. Obviously, with temperature, it depends on your environment and everything else. But I would say with that big heat sink on it, it's not going to struggle. So let's try Raspberry Config. So Control C to stop that. sudo raspberry-config. And system options, boot, maybe, no, not boot, advanced, boot order. So it says boot from SD card before trying NVMe, then USB, but that's what it would say on a Pi 5, because there's no mention of eMMC, and I think it's already on that. And then we've got NVMe, USB boot, before trying USB, then SD card. But yeah, I'm pretty sure, well, I'll put it on SD card. Oh, it just wants updating. Let's do an update first of all then. And yes, I think I might need to restart it before it does that then. Okay, so after restart, it did let me do it, and it now says SD card is default boot device, but I don't think that will be true, so we'll give it a try. Yeah, it didn't boot to the SD card, as I suspected. That'd be nice if they made that a feature of Raspberry Config, though, that you could boot into a device of your choice, but I'm not sure if it's got the same sort of EEPROM as a Raspberry Pi 5, so it might just not be possible. But the way I got around it in another video was um, basically just to wipe the eMMC drive. Uh, so if there was nothing on the eMMC drive, it couldn't boot from it, and so it booted from another device. But that doesn't really relate to this product, so I'll do that in a separate video. So thanks very much to EDATEC for sending me this to test. It's definitely been interesting. And uh, thanks very much for sending me another Compute Module 5 board and also the in and out board as well. So I can do loads more testing on Compute Module 5. Hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.